Hi, Self for joining. So you've probably heard a lot about platforms. Today, I'm here to talk about how to design one. I'm Omer, and in the last few years, my engineering career took a turn when I joined the Infra and started to build platforms for other engineers. In the last three years, I'm leading the Infra group at SNCC. Today, we'll talk about four things. We'll start with the business case of architecture. We'll then dive into what we need to know before we start. And then I'll share two examples from the platform at SNCC. First off, let's talk about why we even bother with architectural design. Why not just start to config Kubernetes and write some Terraform code? And let's start with Conway's law. It basically says that the system design mirrors the organizational structure. The structure of the team limits and di dictates the design of the system. But we are here to talk about platform. So in the extended version that I'm presenting today, the platform is also a limiting factor of the system design. For example, running on Kubernetes is dramatically different than running on serverless. It will change the whole system, depends on your choice. But we can also flip this around. The platform design can be the trigger to change the overall system. That's exactly the, re the reason to think about architectural and designing before starting to coding. The platform is not another service in the system. The platform will design, will shape the systems of the R&D. With that, I hope I convince you that this presentation is important and we can actually start. But before you start to design, there are several things we need to talk about. We will cover specifically three things. One is the current system design. The second is the organizational chart. And the most important one is the problem facing that will need to be solved. Starting with the current system design, from tech to processes, try to learn as much as possible. One of the things we learned during our first customer interviews was that there is a problem with the deployment process. Although some people knew how to explain it, most of the engineers didn't know. and didn't even know how to start to debug it. We quickly understood it had to be replaced and, and brought it into our plans. The second is the organizational chart. And that's not about the names of the team or even the hierarchy in the organization. This is about the different roles in ownership. For example, who can approve a deployment? Who is going on call? And how tasks are being marked as completed? Or more specifically, what is the DevOps model? We aim to learn who is our customers in the organization, who is going to implement with us the platform, and who is going to work with it daily. The last thing is the problems that need to be solved. Now you probably look over this list and think that everything must be solved. But I want you to pick only two, and I want you to pick only two for the next two years, not to the 10, not to five, only two years. Specifically targeting a small percentage of time where you can build a coherent vision without neglecting too long the other problems. It's also that we're not neglecting them it's only that they are on lower priority and will have less resources dedicated to them. But in two years' time, or even before that, you can come back to that decision and focus on different problems. So in the next few minutes, I want to talk about two examples from the from Sneak platform. I already mentioned the first one, the deployment process which we identified as a problem. The first thing we need is to find the information about the organization. And for this case, I'll focus about two, fast growing and you build your own it notion. The combination of them 
means we need to onboard many people all the time and they need to know everything about their app to be able to operate it during their own call. So the simpler process we can do, the less onboarding it takes. And we'll achieve that with having fewer options and using open source tools that has their own documentation and has their own community. For the actual process, we're using Argo City that both gives us a UI, but also has a nice practice of using kubectl apply command that many people already know. The second solution we added to the platform is Helm chart for cloud resources. So getting an RDS is the same process as deploying a Kubernetes config. It's the same process as deploying the code, a process that is known for many people in the organization already. The last thing I want to share is our account structure, which is based on the layer idea. Each layer provisions something else into the account. So there's a clear ownership between the layers. And that clear line can also be used as a responsibility boundary. One of the things we knew would happen is that some of our customers, some of the teams, will only want some parts of the platform. So they will want the ability to provision an account with only some of the layers. Having that layer idea, that clear responsibility boundary, allow us to deploy different accounts with different structure, but keep the ownership very clear between us and the application team, allowing the application team to run on the platform, but still have a lot of freedom. With that, I want to thank you. Uh, we talked today about why to invest time in architecture, how to start, and two examples from the Snake platform. I hope you will have a great time in the rest of the conference and keep in touch in Twitter or LinkedIn. Thank you.